Celtics Reddit podcast, Ben Vallis here. Thank you for joining us. Hope you're doing well. We've got a great guest on the show today, Australian comedian, co-host of Channel 10's The Project and host of the very awesome You Ain't Seen Nothing Yet podcast, Peter Hellyer. We talked about becoming a Celtics fan as a distant Aussie, the roller coaster 2022 regular and postseason, and of course, the upcoming NBA Finals. And with that, let's get into it. All right, it is our pleasure to welcome to the show a great Australian comedian and someone we recently learned is a massive, massive Celtics fan, Peter Hellyer. Welcome, sir. How's it going? I'm great, Ben Jackson. Uh, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to be joining you guys and I'm excited to a couple more sleeps. Yeah, no, just an exciting time all around. <laughs> yeah, it's right around the corner. Absolutely, it, it is very exciting. And before we get into you know the postseason so far and the upcoming final series, which is just feels amazing to say even now, um, just let us know your your Celtics fan origin story. I, you know, like I said, I was surprised to to find out you were a Celtics fan. How did that come about, and how did you originally become a fan of the Celtics? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I probably people identify me as more of a Collingwood supporter. You know, I, I'm very, you know, hard on my sleeve, Collingwood supporter um, in the AFL. Uh, so Celtics have taken a bit of a backseat over the years. But my origin as far as being a Celtic supporter is, um, it was all because of the sitcom Cheers. I just love Cheers. And uh, when Kevin <laughs> McHale uh, was on an episode of Cheers, that just was like, okay, that's, that's a big tick. And then my favorite <laughs> comedy is Planes, Trains and Automobiles with Steve Martin and John Candy. And there's a cracking uh, Larry Bird gag uh, in there. I, th- I think that, I'm not sure if you've seen the movie, you really should. It's, 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 it's a brilliant uh, comedy, but it, uh, it's Steve Martin and John Candy are in a car together and they're, they're both accusing each other of being really annoying and they're coming up with things that are, they find annoying about each other. And Steve Martin says, um, no, John Candy says to Steve Martin, you play with your nuts a lot. And Steve Martin says, I do not play with my balls. And he says, John Candy says, you, you, are you joking? You play with your balls more in an hour than Larry Bird does in a night. Um, and <laughs> when I was 12 years old, I thought that was just hilarious. And Larry Bird was a Celtic and that was that was it. And, um, and yeah, Amazing. so I kind of went on. And, and then like everybody else, I kind of still liked the Lakers, you know, Magic and Kareem and, and was you know, pretty intoxicated by the Chicago Bulls with Jordan in, in the 90s. And I kind of, you know, you forget how easy it is to watch basketball. Uh, in, in more recent years, it was kind of you had to get up early and watch it, you know, catch a game, um, you know, for a while there. And it was either that or WWF, uh, now WWE for me. And um, oh, yeah. and I kind of, you know, I always kept in touch with what the Celtics were doing and all that. But I just, it was just hard to kind of really keep tabs on on you know when the schedule was. So um, hence, I probably for a while this didn't really make a lot of noise about being a Celtic supporter. You know, obviously enjoyed when they won and and. Um, obviously a little while ago now, but um, and then it was kind of my kids and and the, and the programming, you know, the ease of the programming that got me back into it. My kids are big basketball fans. They they all adopted the Celtics. Um, you know, we have Irish heritage in the family as well, and, and it just kind of was perfect. So yeah, we, we're just massive Celtics fans, and and just just love it. We went over there in 2018 and watched. Um, we saw at the garden and, and saw uh, the Celtics take on uh, the Cavs when LeBron was, was still there and, and, and nice. Kyrie was yeah. uh, playing for us. Uh, we won that game and then we saw uh, Jimmy Butler when he was at the Timberwolves play us and, um, and we took that one as well. So, um, and that was Aaron Baines was there. We got to have photos on the court with him and, oh, yeah. and uh, it was, it was uh, yeah, pretty sweet. Nice. Nice one. Nice one. You said you've um, you know, taken a bit of a back seat lately. Do you remember like, how, what are your memories of like the, maybe the last six, seven series uh, years rather? So like maybe post KG Pierce, is there any years that have stood out to you as your favorite or maybe the, the team that was the funnest to watch in that period? Well, I, I think it's the, the, the team now. Like I, this is why I'm so excited. It's not, I try to tell people, it's not just that it's Boston. It's this team and like our hearts are broken in our family when it like i remember coming home from work mm. and uh my now old yeah well he was my oldest son there but he's you know a few years old now he just said uh it's left and he was almost in tears and i was just like oh my god and then he said the Kyrie's coming and i was like oh 
okay. <laughs> that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, at the time, you, you forget that it yeah, was a pretty pretty exciting, it felt like a pretty exciting trade, even though our hearts were pretty heavy. And we always wanted IT to come back, and still to this day, or this year, like a lot of Boston fans, we were like hoping, you know, um, even on a, on a 10-day contract, you know, just give us something. Yeah. Um, um, Do you believe in the curse? Um, I'm, I mean, I'm a, I'm a Collingwood supporter. So I, I said, I, I, I said to, I said to one of my sons when we, we, we lost, you know, game six, I just said, I just want to barrack for a team that just gets the job done, yep. you know, like, and, and seeing Golden State, you know, kind of reasonably breeze through their, their, you know, uh, final against Dallas was, was like, oh, why can't we do that? Why can't we do that? Yeah. Um, but, um, no, I, I and, and then Tatum came along, and it was just like, and, and for him to join Jalen, and all of a sudden it's the Jays, and and this, you know, um, you know, for anyone who follows AFL, I, Marcus Smart for me is like Glenn Archer, who used to play for North Melbourne, just an absolute warrior on the field, and and um, and I, I keep telling people that this is a, a team that was they're being recruited to Boston, you know, drafted by Boston, you know, even the guys who weren't, you got L Horford who you know, played, you know, three years in Boston and then he's 35. Like he <laughs> yeah. was, you know, he, we just took him off the scrap heap and he was, he was, you know, from hard rubbish and, and, um, and he's been amazing. And, and, and Derek White, nobody really thought too much about it. I was disappointed to see Josh Richardson, you know, uh, leave. I, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't, I, I could see the, the value of Derek White, but um, I really love Josh Richardson, just the way he, the way he conducted himself and, and, um, um, but, uh, but you can't, you can't fault the moves, you know, that, um, that they've made. Um, and, and yeah, I, I, I just completely adore this team you know, Rob Williams, like everyone. So I'm just going off on my, no, no, everyone's go, go improved. <laughs> I love that everyone has improved on that roster this year. There's not one person that the improvement I call, I call uh, Grant Williams either Larry Williams or, or, or Grant Bird. Like he's just become this <laughs> freak from the uh, the corner. Yeah. And and you know Al Horford, nobody expected that, but you know Rob Williams has become. You know we always hoped. I remember seeing his highlights when we drafted him, and you know he was he was you know he, he, correct me if I'm wrong, but he was like almost late twenties. You know where we where we got him, and, and he was certainly second round, mm-hmm. and and um, he. He's just been incredible, and I I pray that he's fit, you know, that he's really properly fit. And I I'm having discussions with my older son, like whether you leave him out of game one just to kind of give him a few extra days to to get over, but um whatever he's got. But um yeah, no, I love this team. I was going to jump in real quick there because we had a user um, Dogma DRP who literally asked the same question, like, do you rest him to give him an extra t- extra time off? But you've pretty much answered that there. So would, do you reckon you would just yeah, to jump ahead? Uh, horribly sorry. I reckon like, when we when we had smart and 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 i think rob out for i remember saying it was at least it was game one you know and it was a way i think that was against against maybe uh the, the the bucks and and um i thought well at least it's game one you know at least it's at least you can recover from there like as opposed to going into a crunch game you know a six or a seven uh without those guys so i would be if it's a line ball i'd give him an extra three days and i mean it was pretty cruel schedule it's great for us as TV viewers um, to watch a game every day, whether it's Boston or you know on the other side, the other coast. But but Jesus, it's a punishing schedule every every second day you're playing. So we do get that extra, you know. I think it's every three days or so now. So hopefully that'll help. But if you yeah, if he's right to go, he's right to go. But I would consider giving him that game one off. Yeah, yeah I'd love to see him get a rest yeah. and and have ninety percent of Rob Williams from game two onwards, rather than sixty percent of Rob Williams from game one yeah. onwards, and then sort of a diminishing effect on on his health percentage there um so well, yeah they, they, they didn't even try a single lob to him um in game seven which kind of tells me that was almost discussed yeah you know uh, <laughs> in, in, in the rooms um so yeah fingers crossed very telling so yeah i mean shifting to the current season and uh, this season has been pretty crazy a lot of ups and downs at what point during this season peter uh, if at any point did you realize that this team was going to be a legit title contender um, I had COVID. Um, <laughs> Sorry in, to hear that. Yeah, <laughs> was, about it twice actually. This is why oh, we're doing it on, on, online. Um, <laughs> and uh, you could you could see the the winnings. You know, early on in that first half, they were winning strange games and losing. 
we were losing more at home than we were on the road. And I think winning on the road is a sign of a good team. I don't think I mean, bad teams don't, you know, they can, they can, they can snatch games in a row, but they're not doing it as regularly as the Celtics were. So I just kind of thought, oh, there's something here. I mean, I've, and I've felt this way the last few years. I just feel like if things were to go right, and Jalen did his wrist last year, so he missed. So that was like, ah. So everyone stayed fit. Every time there's a, you see, you know, somebody, you know, the, the, the Celtics report and they're questionable or you think, oh, bloody hell, and what's this about? I mean, Al Horford came up. I'm not sure how Al Horford misses one game uh, from COVID, but um, we'll let that go. <laughs> yeah. um, it's the protocols, but, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so I had a feeling there was something there and I, I'm not sure if there was a game, but going into the, um, the All-Star weekend, I remember people kept on saying post-All-Star weekend, oh, they, you know, they, it was post All Star Weekend, but we I think I remember we, we I think we won like six or seven games into that and we dropped the last game against Detroit and I had a few friends who were like, oh how can we lose to Detroit? I was, and I was like, I'd rather be beating you know Golden State and lose like dropping a game. Like it's a, it's an eighty two game season. It's it's a strange you're gonna drop games unless you are have one of those all out years where you are just winning almost, you know, 90% of the games, you were going to drop some weird games. And uh, I, I felt like we did that, you know, a bit this uh, in the first half of the year. And then leading into that All-Star, we dropped the Detroit game. And I thought, in fact, I was really happy Detroit weren't in the playoffs, to be honest, because I think we lost to them, yes. yeah. I think, three or four times in the <laughs> Arch end. nemesis, Detroit Pistons. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Like the heat all over, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, certainly when Jalen Brown sent out that the vibe is about the shift, um, Tweet. I'm not, you know, I, I like the intent of it. Uh, I didn't realize it was going to have such a magical uh, energy about it. And um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's, I'm not sure how you guys feel, but how long ago does it feel that Dennis Schroeder played for this for this team? It feels like a, it feels like a, like another multiple s- seasons. It really does. Yeah. It really M- does. Millennia ago. It feels like an infinite amount of time ago. It's, it's a, uh, yeah, completely separate season at this point. But um, and it's we- crazy because I remember thinking. What a good pickup! Like yeah. you know, on, on five, yeah, it's cheap. He's a, you know, on five million bucks, um, and and he was playing pretty well, you know. Like and and it's just that's why it's, I love that the patience they've shown in this group, and and, and I'm not, you know, um, it's just these, it's like it's just getting the right pieces and the right chemistry between players, and and I mean, I'm not, I'll ask you, did you guys? Did you guys buy into the split the Jays up or the trade smart? Were you guys, where were you guys when it came down to that? I didn't want to touch anything until the season was over and you just see where the rest of the pieces fit. But I was definitely like losing patience. I hate to admit that I was entertaining the idea, but I just absolutely not. If you had to, if I'd say yes or no, it was a hard no still. Yeah. Yeah, 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 Ben. Same. Yeah, I mean, we had you know, multiple guests on. We had Matt Penny, who's the the head of Under Armour's youth development program, and he's also a huge Celtics fan. We spent an hour talking about all the blow it up options, like who we could trade Jalen Brown for. Could we buy in low on Ben Simmons and build from there? And <laughs> we had all of these dark. conversations, which <laughs> yeah, it is dark now looking back on it. But yeah, we were, we were right there with you for sure. But what, but what was the? It was incredible. And this is another th- incredible thing about this season. Like, it actually felt like I'd almost accepted that they were going to trade Marcus Smart. Mm-hmm. Like, right before that trade mm-hmm. deadline, it seemed almost a formality that, that it was going to happen. And I remember saying to my son, I don't like it, but for some reason, it, maybe it's not working as well as, you know, it, it, it could. And, and you know, I'm, gonna, I'm always going to love Marcus Smart, and I hope they don't do it. But I, in a way, that I was accepting. I was preparing myself for <laughs> it. So then they didn't do it. And immediately... He became, he, he changed, and I do wonder how much it must play on their minds, like the human factor of like, shit, am I going, am I going to get traded, you know, and and where will they trade me to, and, and and all those. But as soon as the trade deadline passed and they committed to him, and we, who knows what was going on behind closed doors and how close they got to entertaining it, but he just became, I think, a a, a different player, and um. And the ability of uh, Ime Doka, who incredibly, I'm sure you've discussed this, did not receive, was not in the top three coaches of the year, which he'll embarrass, no. you know, they should be embarrassed by now. And hopefully their embarrass, embarrassment becomes more acute over the next, um, over our next four wins. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, his ability to get Marcus to play the way he's played and, and for particularly the Jays to, to share the ball the way they've been sharing the ball is just 
Just incredible. It's a masterclass. Gentlemen, all men strive for gold in their life, right? Gold medals, gold watches, gold everything. However, there's a certain type of man who goes the extra mile. He walks with the confidence of an eagle and giggles in the face of danger. He's a big hairless winning machine and when he unzips his pants, he sees platinum? That's right, Manscaped would like to introduce you to their best and biggest ultimate hygiene bundle yet, the Platinum Package 4.0. Manscaped is the leader in below the waist grooming and now trust them with the whole shebang. Join the 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped by going to manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping with the code CRPOD. CR as in Celtics Reddit, pod as in podcast. Now I gotta say, you know, Manscaped, as we joined them, as we partnered with them, they sent us out some stuff and it's really made a huge difference to my my hygiene and my grooming routine. A lot of extra confidence, particularly wearing NBA jerseys and no longer needing to worry about the, uh, shall I say, the uh, increasing shoulder hair that uh, one male gets as a, as a maturing male. Further to that, going to the hairdresser, getting my hair cut, I no longer see them reaching into my ears or to certain parts around my neck, you know, trimming hair that I didn't realize I had. With the Manscaped package, I, I feel like I'm all over it. So I really, I can't recommend getting on top of your own grooming enough and employing Manscaped. Manscaped's brand new Platinum Package 4.0 is the biggest bundle they've ever offered, giving you a bulk discount on Manscaped's top products. The Manscaped Platinum Package 4.0 is the one-stop shop for the man who deserves it all. They designed this package to allow you to fully align your entire hygiene routine with elite products. Inside this platinum package, you'll find their lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, weed whacker, ear and nose hair trimmer. By God, I need that myself. Ultra premium body wash, ultra premium two-in-one shampoo and conditioner, ultra premium deodorant, crop preserver, anti-chafing ball deodorant, very handy, crop reviver ball spray toner, anti-chafing boxes and the shed travel bag to hold your goods while traveling. The Lawnmower 4.0 body trimmer and weed whacker nose and ear hair trimmer feature proprietary advanced skin safe technology to protect your delicate parts and holes. Both are waterproof so you can shave with less mess. In addition to shaving, you can now completely upgrade your shower routine with the ultra premium body wash and ultra premium two-in-one shampoo and conditioner you'll have your skin and hair feeling hydrated and smelling fresh. As well, don't forget to apply their aluminum-free ultra-premium deodorant for that cologne quality scent on the go. But it's not just your pits that stink, your balls can stink too, believe me. Thankfully, their Crop Reserver Ball Deodorant and Crop Reviver Ball Toner can solve this problem for you. Once they touch your sack, you'll never go back. Manscaped even threw in two free gifts to their Platinum Package 4.0, the Manscaped Boxes and the Shed Travel Bag. If you're traveling like me to the NBA Finals from Australia, you need to throw all this stuff into your Shed Travel Bag. It's an essential at this point. Bring your comfort and boxes to another level. The Platinum Package 4.0 covers all the bases from head to toe, the best bang for your shebang. So support the Celtics Reddit podcast, and more importantly, support yourself. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code CRPOD at manscaped.com. CRPOD at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. It's time you enjoy the finer things in life and get yourself a Platinum Package for your Platinum Package. Shifting to the postseason, I mean, it feels like we could talk about the regular season forever, just given how many chapters there were. But oh, I'm interested to hear um, Game 7, Eastern Conference Finals. What was going through your mind when that Jimmy Butler 3 was in the air? Oh, it was, it's funny because I'd had a very similar afternoon the previous day in watching uh, Collingwood play Carlton at the MCG. So there's 80,000 people there. Collingwood are comfortably winning, should be up by more, but they're winning enough with a few minutes to go that they, you know, it shouldn't be an issue. And Carlton come home with a wet sail and kick the last few goals. And all of a sudden, we are down. No, so we are. We're still up by up by four points, and and, and the, it's you know forty seconds to go. The ball's down the Carlton end, and they they take a shot. They miss. We you know eleven seconds to go. We got to bring the ball back in. We make a strange choice. It's in, it's it's a contest, and it was just like that was way harder than it needed to be. <laughs> and the Boston game was exactly the same. It was like we are you know in control here, and then and then we do this occasionally where we just. We don't continue what's working, and, and and I think Marcus maybe took some. He decided he was going to be the guy, 
and <laughs> get a little bit nervous. It was wide open. Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean that that wasn't was was okay. But Marcus, you know, like he, um, yeah, I just feel like they they stopped doing attacking the paint. Like we were in the bonus. Just just keep scoring. I was watching with my my older son and, and my wife came in just to you know just, you know just to see what you know, she could see we're up by you know fifteen or so. This is when Tatum loses the ball and the, the, we lose the jump the, the jump ball. Mm-hmm. And I, I said to her, all we need to do is keep scoring. Just keep scoring. And she kind of like, kind of laughed. And I thought, well, that seems a bit obvious. She said, she said, and I said, I oh, know it's obvious, but this is what we need to do. If we keep scoring, they can't beat us. Yeah. And I swear, I shit you not, we stopped scoring over the next two minutes. And, and my, yeah, it gets back to a couple of points. And my wife says, I think I should leave. And I think I said, yeah, I think <laughs> you, you probably should. <laughs> and, and, and then, so when Butler takes it down, oh, it was. I probably wasn't thinking. I, I was still thinking. There's, you know, there was 13 seconds or so left on the clock. They would at least have the ball. Um, but I, obviously, you know, if it didn't go in, it, it, you know, we probably win. So it was then he missed. Thankfully, I don't blame him for taking the shot. I think it was a pretty good shot. Um, and, and I think Doris Burke, I quite enjoy. Um, she, she made the point he was probably out of his feet he played every second of the game he probably just wants to end it there and there and then thankfully it came down they got it to Marcus and probably not enough that he made it Marcus makes those two shots because there's a big difference between being oh, yeah. four points up uh, with an inbound ball than, um, than you know three points up or you know or missing both and having two points up because our free throws haven't been Marcus has been pretty good but our free throws haven't been being great yeah so after the, the two that Jalen botched in game six, and it was just, I had the oh same God. thought. It, it, it can't happen again, but yeah. Jalen um, seems to be a 50% guy. You know, like you'll get one out of one out of two pretty one consistently. Down one down brown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pete, the obvious question, mate. We're so banged up at this point. Warriors seem quite fresh. Is it going to matter? Can we win this series? I think we can definitely win it. Um, and there's no point barricading for any team if you don't think if you at this point you know you don't think you can win whether it's basketball or football or whatever. But um, it'll be tough. You know, I think home court advantage probably means a bit more when you've got to go coast to coast as opposed to up and down. Hmm. You know, um, on an hour or so flight. So, but I definitely think we, it'd be great to snatch uh, an early road win. Um, give them something to think about. I'm hoping. I think we're just. Uh, you know, every player on our team received at least one vote in, in the Defensive Player of the Year. That's incredible. I'm not, I have no wow. idea if that's been done before, but it, it's, it says a lot. So they're awesome. Steph will get hot, you know, in, in, in moments in games or even over a full game, but you can't shoot 40 or 50 every game, surely. So um, obviously there's Clay and, and Jordan. I'm hoping Jordan Poole kind of, Remembers that he's also played some G League games this year, and uh, <laughs> <That'd be nice. laughs> um, yeah, and Wigan's kind of you know, but I feel like we got a better, a better seven. Yeah, I think. Yeah, do you guys think that? Yeah, I think so too. I, I think uh, talent wise, and this seems to be sort of the prevailing narrative among the media is the Celtics have the more talented top seven, but the Warriors have that championship pedigree, and that that matters, especially when no one on the Celtics roster has made the finals. So there's a I kind of it kind of balances it out evenly I think which is what makes it a really anticipated series. Um, I want to get to a question from a Reddit user. So to proceed that you know we had no challenge from the Brooklyn Nets really we swept them and then we went on to two of the most physically challenging playoff series in recent memory against the Bucks and the Heat. The this Reddit user Mixy Seven asks, will this be the toughest matchup the Celtics have faced so far? in the playoffs like the, the the Warriors are more of a finesse team than a physical team but they do what they do so well do you think that'll be the toughest thing we've seen so far these playoffs I think it's only toughest because it's it's the, it's it's for the it's for the ring I I I, I do I think the the, the the your listeners probably getting at yeah the fact that I think I think the Bucks are a more physical team and I think Miami were a more physical team than you know and you made the point as well um so I think physically they won't pose as far as banging us up. I I don't think we'll get as banged up, um, which is which, which could be important. Um, but it is just that that perimeter shooting. I think if we can, yeah, you know, I love the way. I'm not sure if you can do the same with Steph or with with uh, Clay or even Jordan Poole, but the way Derek White guarded 
Duncan Robinson, who has scored against us, you know, previously and, and come on and be dangerous. He, he just kind of he just, he, he took him from behind in a way. He just had his hand and Robinson couldn't get a shot up. Now, Steph Curry, this may be a controversial opinion, I rate higher than Duncan Robinson. Um, so, no. yeah, yes. That's a hot take. You, you wanted some hot takes, guys, and I'm bringing them. Um, but if Derek White can can carry on his form and if he can have another kid between now and then that'll be uh, awesome superpowers um, yep. <laughs> his, his superpowers in, the, in, 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 that, in that birth um, then I think that's that's also huge and if Marcus can be absolutely switched on which he, he usually is that's usually not an issue and, and if Rob can be fit because when you, you saw Rob when he plays he just he changes that space you know the, the, and the way they attack the paint it's just that they, they go in and they have to kind of retreat and um and 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 so that's great so i don't know i'm confidence i feels like you know we'll we'll jinx it but um (laughs) you know i'm i'm looking forward to a a contest and and um yeah i think we can do it i think we can do it what's the what's the advantage for the celtics here like if you're if you're a coach of doka for a day you're coaching the celtics and you're saying you know attack this weakness of of the warriors what what are you how are you guiding the celtics to victory there what weakness are you trying to exploit well, I mean, God say, you kind of forget that they are pretty good defensively as well. Like they're they're, they're not um, they're not chumps. They're not, they're not just three point you know um, shooters. Um, and and then the answer is I don't really know. Like I, I <laughs> neither do we. I yeah, no. <laughs> I, I really don't. And and, and what I what I'm going to love watching, which I want to really love watching, particularly in um, even with the Brooklyn series, but particularly the Bucks and. And Miami are uh, the changes both teams made from game to game to adjust to whatever was happening, you know, in the last game. It's like nothing seemed to work twice in a row. You know, <laughs> like the, the, the adjustments were made by the coaches. So it'd be fascinating to see how we come out on on, on Friday and 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 and, um, and and play them. And and but then I, I I suspect we'll have to do something different in game two, whether we uh, you know win or lose. Let's just say. We get to game seven and we win that game. What does a championship celebration look like for you, Peter Hellier? Well, how, how, how wild are you going? I've already looked at it. I literally, <laughs> and I made a change. I'm not sure whether to change it now because I, I, may, I may moz it, but it's the day after, the morning after the Logies. And oh, wonderful. So I'll be on the Gold Coast and then I'm going to, in Cairns, to join my family for a, a week holiday. And I think I'm going to be literally on a, on a flight. So. I will, I will have to change that flight. Yep. Um, either get up <laughs> earlier to Cairns and watch it with my, which I think would be the preference, um, and then, and then just drink for um, <laughs> for a day at least. And and I was in Ireland in Dublin, in Collingwood won the um, 2010 replay. I was at the MCG for the, the actual game, the drawn game, and then we we're leaving to go to Paris on the Wednesday. Or the France and and um and they'll replay the AFL they replay the game so it was the following week and I said to my wife is there any chance we can delay <laughs> going to going to France and she'd already put so much work and effort in so I, you know I, I said okay no that's right we'll find a place to watch it but I didn't this is again I talk about how easy it is to watch sport now back then you had to rely on a, a good internet connection and, and like a, a you know a live pass yeah that it still was a bit you know even i'm not even sure if they were there i think you had to find a pub that was, was showing it and we were supposed to be in normandy and they weren't they got no interest in an afl grand final they're still hung up on mm-hmm. on the second world war so um uh so we went to dublin and we watched it in dublin and uh, so watched it at a similar time at like a 10 o'clock in the morning um and yeah um just drunk in us for a while and um and uh, so it'll be that. I'll be watching the replay as many times as I can, um, enjoying it with my sons. My son gave me my oldest son. Yeah, we were very affectionate, but he, you know, he's 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 nineteen now, and he's, his hugs get a bit lighter. You know, it's almost like <laughs> you know, it's almost like I've got I've got COVID or something. Um, but we, we we won the other day. It was a good tight bear hug that he gave me, nice. and, um, and that was that was pretty sweet. So. Um, yeah, fingers sport hugs are the best hugs. Oh, they are. Everyone gets into it. Yeah. <laughs> they are, and that's what's great about sport. You know, whether you know you hug, you hug strangers and you can high five strangers, and and um, it, it's all that matters is what's happening 
uh, on the screen or on the field or on the court. It's great. Yeah, absolutely. I have a two-year-old here, so I'm still trying to explain the virtues of Celtics fandom to her, but uh, early days. We'll, we'll see how we go there. Uh, before we wrap up, Peter Hellier, quick finals prediction. Obviously, we're, we're skewing Celtics here on this podcast and, and you yourself mm. there as a big Celtics fan. Realistically, objectively, if you can lean that way, how do you think it's going to go? Okay, so it's going to be Celtics, but it it, it, <laughs> it won't be it obviously it won't be a sweep. I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna say Celtics in six. Yeah, I think I'm there with you, Jackson. So, do you agree? Sad. Uh, I'm going seven. I just think we're better on the road. Yeah, I'm yeah. Need the road games. The I tend to I'm, agree. Just, I'm just trying. I'm just trying to win in Boston, uh, but it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't usually happen. So yeah, maybe it's Boston in four. Um. <laughs> All right, yes, lock that in. Ben's at that game, so he'll. Yeah. Are you going? Are you going? My wife has kindly let me fly over for game three and game four, so uh, I'll be there. Hopefully, for Celtics wrapping it up in four. So um, we'll see. We'll see how we go. Well, I, I, I consider that I considered going. I said to my kids in lockdown, I said when we when we come out of this craziness, we'll go over and we'll follow Boston on a little road trip. Nice and. Um, and then I, I said to my wife, oh, maybe me and this Liam, our oldest, can go over. <laughs> and um, she didn't like the idea of the others missing out. So we'll try. <laughs> so we'll, yeah, we tried, but we'll stick to next year. We'll, we'll go over and hopefully see uh, us try to defend a championship. Yeah, championship victory lap. I love it. Well, Peter Hellyer, we'd obviously love to talk Celtics with you all night, but we're out of time. You're, of course, welcome back on the show anytime. Thanks so much for coming on. Really appreciate it. No worries, guys. If we if we win, when we win, I'll come back on. All right, we'll hold you to that, mate. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jackson, that was fun. Peter Hellier on the podcast. Well, what do you think of the chat that we just had with him? Great, yeah. I mean, he's he. I didn't know how knowledgeable he would be. Whether he'd be like a hardcore lifer or he'd be a bit of a, a casual, but like he seemed to like know his stuff. Particularly like you know he's been definitely knew it for a few years. You can tell, and it was yeah, he was very. Um, I had no idea you're such a Celtics fan, so it's. Good to know. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, definitely held his own. You can you can tell how passionate a fan he is, and super nice of him. Look, before we wrap this podcast up, yeah, obviously all the media attention, most of the fan attention, of course the team's attention, shifting towards the finals. We thought it'd be fun to sort of just revel a little bit in not just this most recent regular season, but everything that's led up to where we're at now. So making the finals and. Um, we thought we'd play a sort of a modern era Celtics word slash name association game, just as a way of sort of recognizing and acknowledging everything that's come post Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett trade, which is where recognizing now is the modern era, everything that's led up to, to this, um, hopefully title run Jackson. I've got a few names. I want to run by you just off the cuff. And I'm just interested to hear the first thing that pops into your head as I, out of these names sound good deal all right yes let's all go right, on a, let's go on a walk down memory lane exactly all right here we go shemi ojale combat muscles yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what else did he do <laughs> he just stood there being ripped i think like i almost said 37 but that's not an answer. yeah i think like game two 2018 against the bucks he may have defended Giannis well on like two possessions so i'll add that in as well all right. True. Doesn't he have a record for most threes in a game as well? Or like most... No, that's smart. Never mind. He's got some three record that I think we talked about one time. That's Maybe wild. it's like most threes by a poorly paid, you know, bench player. Uh, over, overly it, yeah. muscular man with the most threes. Yeah. So let's, let's call he it shot that. shot the three with his bicep. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly Olenek. Oh, game seven. Game of his life, <laughs> Kelly Olynyk. That's it, yeah. That, that, <laughs> I watched that in London, and it was just like, of all the people, it's Kelly Olynyk. Yeah, no, oh, I yeah. Just, the clinic was on that night. Yeah, uh, Kyrie Irving. Uh, I don't know if this is the exact quote. I don't owe anybody shit. Sounds about that's right. the moment. That's the moment. Yeah. It, it it just all fell apart. It all went wrong. It was like, oh Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> we made <Doesn't>... a mistake. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, we did make a huge mistake. Uh, Although, obviously, it wasn't giving us anything, you know, much more at that point. So, um, no, it's still know. the right move. Unfortunately, it was the right basketball move. Jordan no, Crawford. Oh, East Conference Player of the Week. Yeah, December second to ninth, two thousand thirteen. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. D- disciple. That's what I think of. Disciple of the uh, next man's name I'm about to utter, Brad Stevens. President. Yep. The he's, he's, he's probably going to be the most underrated 
maybe not underrated by us. We all know what he's about, and we all know that he's like had a big part in getting us here. But you know, Adoka's getting some love finally. The players are getting some love. Brad Stevens needs to get some love too, because this is him basically. Yeah, the post KG era and Pierce era has been the Brad Stevens era. There's no two ways about it. Totally. Yeah. Uh, he's well a, said. Big. I, I saw some footage of Brad Stevens coaching the other day, and it. it looked weird he felt out of place which is to say he's already like so cemented in that presidential you know president of basketball operations role it's already weird to sort of look back and see him on the sidelines which is just to say he's done an amazing job so far uh avery bradley uh second best celtic to ever wear zero yeah, I would add to that. His, his foot yeah. was not on the line in the Houston game. <laughs> I stand yeah. by that to this day. Uh, Isaiah Thomas. The little guy. The little guy, yeah. The, le- the legend, yeah. Rep. Rest uh, in peace. Loved Tony him Hunter. so much. We all did. We lacked wax lyrical on every like, other episode about how good it was, but yeah, he was, he was the man. Rajon Rondo, technically part of, yeah, he was the first, like, let's build around this guy, right? It, he was coached by Brad Stevens. It's kind of, it's yeah. easy to forget. Rondo was the first Celtics jersey I ever had. But when you said Rondo, the buzzer beater against us as a Laker Ooh. is the first thing I thought of. Yeah, ouch. ouch. <laughs> that says a lot about, like, how long it's been, I yeah. <laughs> uh, I got one more for you. Gordon Hayward. Okay. Snap. Tragic, <laughs> Tra- yeah, snap. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, snap. Oh, snap! Nah, tragic because that was. Even though we are where we are now, and I wouldn't wouldn't change a thing. You real? That's the biggest what if for me of, of my fandom of the Celtics. If that if that leg just stayed intact, yeah. Although, where would we be? It's so interesting. Like the way that we make it to the finals is with this homegrown talent. It's with Smart and Tatum and Brown at the helm. If Kyrie Irving didn't have a brain snap and if Gordon Hayward didn't have an ankle snap, like would we have made it to the finals with that call? Or did all of that need to happen in order to clear the way for Tatum and Brown and Smart to lead us to the finals? It's kind of interesting looking back, like everything fell perfectly for us in the end now that we're here, but uh, interesting sort of sliding doors moment. Yeah. I think we would have got, I think if they stay healthy and Kyrie keeps his head on, I think we get one more star and then we have like big three part two. Yeah, right. Uh, but instead we've got, we've got something much better, much, much, much better in my opinion. You got anything for me before we wrap this up? I do, you know. I do. Terrified. Me, uh... <laughs> Should have been more prepared. Okay. A little, little bit more out of, a little bit more out of left field. I'll accept just a single statement and we can move on. Okay. Uh, Jonas Jurebko. Oof. Uh, Jonas Drebko, great hair, Fongo's original love interest. Nice. This is the hardest one, by the way. Mo Wagner. Mo Wagner. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was only a few months ago. <laughs> yeah. Great hustle guy. Like, could have could have cemented himself as like a, a sort of a Steamsma-esque Celtics legend, um, but just couldn't do enough consistently and obviously had to move on. But uh, I, I enjoyed the Mo Wagner experience. There's that like iconic uh, shot of him sort of laying down under the hoop, super exasperated, which I think fans at the time used to sort of express how they, they felt about the season. So yeah, yeah, Mo <laughs> Wagner, great. Absolutely. <laughs> Scary Terry. Scary Terry. Uh, oh, I'm drawing a mental blank here. Drew, Drew Bledsoe, right? Drew Bledsoe, Drew Bledsoe uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I still have my Scary Terry shirt somewhere. Good times, yeah. Still good friends nice. with the Jays, apparently. I think I think so. And for what it was like, only probably six months ago, we were like, yeah, we made a big mistake getting rid of him. Probably did, but then what happens to Smart? I don't yeah. know. Um, Jeff Teague. <sighs> I don't. I, I'm, I mean, Jeff T, Je- NBA champion, Jeff T. NBA, yeah, yeah. Pivotal Although part of that box team, he, he may have been so toxic, and maybe that led to the Bucks sort of folding to us this year. I don't know. He wasn't with them, but uh, just the, sort of the uh, the snowball effect of having Jeff T on your team. I yeah, he is the anti anti Midas. Yeah, <laughs> no gold anywhere. Um, finally, Greg Monroe. The Moose. The Moose was loose. There was a playoff game. I want to say it was game two at home against the Sixers where there was some critical Moose minutes that we went on a run when he came off the bench and yeah. we won that game and like he instigated that run. I think we were trailing before he came in and uh, he just like dominated for, <laughs> for like two minutes and we're like, that's yeah. why we hired that guy. 
That's uh, that's my Absolutely. lasting memory of the boost. Good stuff. Good stuff, Jackson. You got a triple double too. I'm pretty sure I was 10, 10, 10. <laughs> yeah. The bad. Can't minimum. remember when, but yeah. <laughs> still, it still counts. <laughs> amazing all right folks well i hope you enjoy that trip down memory lane i would love to just leave in this pocket of time where we're you know we've made the finals but like we haven't lost yet not that i'm saying we're gonna lose but it's just a, it's just a nice period of time and all of the world's basketball media is focused on the celtics and the warriors so uh lap it up i hope you enjoyed that conversation with peter hellier i hope you enjoyed our little word name association game that's going to do it for this one. Thank you so much for joining us. Of course, you can join us on our playback stream for game one in two days' time. I'll be tweeting that link out multiple times between now and then. You can find it on the comments for this podcast and YouTube as well. Jackson, thanks so much for joining us. Love your work, mate. Cheers, Ben. Thank you. All right, folks. Until next time, go Celtics. Peace.